is Scarlett, who's going to be going home on Wednesday. Is that correct? Wednesday. So I want to make it really simple. I don't want to keep it. I don't want it to be difficult to remember what to be doing with her. So basically, the core of it is this: when she gets home, um, she's in the kennel. So we deal with kennel behavior so we can know that we have good kennel behavior because what the kennel is, is it's that place when you do it right, that when she's there, nothing's going wrong, right? She's not having any unwanted experience, a lot comes up. So we need to make sure we have this. So what happens is she, we open up her freedoms as we get to work on them. So first thing we do is we get her in the kennel and teach her the rules of the kennel. So here's the rules of the kennel though. She's in there, she's quiet, and she's laying down. That's it, okay? If she is not being worked by you, she's in the kennel. So this is what it looks like. She sleeps in the kennel overnight, we come down, we give her a potty break, which we'll be talking about, and we give her breakfast, right? And then we put her back in the kennel, and, and we go upstairs and do human stuff until we're ready to go get her and bring her for a morning walk, or her morning training session if she's here. So basically, throughout her day, she's only with you if we're working with her, meaning training, meaning the way, that we're, the, the way that we do it is we're going after the bad behaviors, right? We want to stop all this stuff, and we'll, we're, we're going to talk about that later in this video. So she's either with you working on that stuff or in the kennel. What she's not doing is just wandering about, and you're wandering about doing separate things, okay? She's out, you're monitoring her behavior. This is the transition to back home, okay? She needs to adapt to the new rules back home, so we want to have controlled experiences first to show her the new rules of home. First one we're gonna tackle is gonna be the place, right? The place command. So we can take her out of here. Actually, the, uh, to be honest, the real first thing we're gonna do is, is the recall because you know, she's gonna need to go to, to go to the bathroom in the mornings and stuff like that. So you gotta make sure we got a place for her to use the bathroom. Hopefully it's a fenced in area. I think it is, right? Much easier to just let her out and potty, recall her back in, put her in a kennel. Easy stuff to work on. The next thing is the place command. We need to bring her to the spot that we're gonna be hanging out as a family. That's usually where the place bed is. And teach her the rules of the place bed, which means if you're told to go on the place bed, you stay there, same as the kennel. You're in a down and you're quiet. If you're, doing, if you're trying to get off the bed, you get corrected. If you're making noise, you get corrected, okay? This is teaching her the rules and we will show you how to do that on the go home, okay? So now, imagine this, so now her life is going outside, for potty and whatever else, play, whatever else you do out there. Kennel, nice and quiet and good behavior. And then the place, we've worked on that, right? So now she has this small little life. Next thing we can work on is bringing her for a walk around the neighborhood. The, the kind that you go right out your door and whatever's out there, okay? Um, so we work on a little walk. So we teach her when we're in heel, it's no bullshit and it's following us. No sniffing, no pulling, no barking, no lunging, none of it. When I stop and, and release you, then you can go potty and run around and be a dog. And as soon as you hear that tone, it's right back to work and it's walking politely. So you can practice that control around your own neighborhood. Now what happens is eventually that gets easy because you're gonna get the training here of how to do that and you'll, you'll be confident by the time you go home. That's gonna be easy. Now what you have is you have the indoor behavior nice and under control and you got a nice walk. That's a pretty good life as it is. If we wanna bring it further, we're gonna do. We're gonna. We're gonna go into the car, right? This is something we should do anyway. Now we have a relationship with her because we went through all this stuff. So now we're gonna try to bring her to the outside world. You know, get her in the car. Rules in the car. Super easy for us to remember. Same as the kennel. Down and quiet. That's it. Same as place. You can see that. You know, if we put our dog in a down, we want that's telling them mentally. Uh, be passive with the environment. Just let everything happen. Just, just let it happen around you. Don't interact with it. If you're free and I say, go interact with, you know, break, then she can go interact with her environment. But if she's in a command, that means to be passive, okay? So in the car, it's a down stay, right? You just tell her down and be quiet. Anything other than that is unacceptable, right? We're conditioning these new ways of, of thinking and feeling about these, these uh, you know, milestones throughout the day that you're gonna be hitting. So we teach her how to go for a car ride. Maybe we might pick a place to go once the car rides easy, which will probably happen quickly if you do what you're told here and you follow the rules and get those messages across to her, you're gonna quickly be going off property. Where do we wanna go? Where's a place, you know, think about what you would like to do with her around your area and pick one. Pick one and go work on that one, right? Maybe it's a field, maybe it's a hiking trail. Shh. 
See, I corrected her. She's getting fidgety. Just that mild fidgetiness gets corrected, right? Especially because I'm trying to talk on a video and she's not, you know, nudging the metal thing. So you make it, maybe it's high control. For this example, we'll say it's a high control. You're gonna teach her how to get out of the car, how to follow you until released, and then once released, to know to come back as soon as she hears that tone. The only way to do that is the way we'll teach you, of course, at the go home. Um, so now you're teaching her that those rules follow you wherever, wherever you go. It's not just at home, it's not just at training, it's not just in the car, it's out in the world. And starting in the wilderness is, is probably ideal, because then if there's anything that goes sloppy, she gets far away from you, it won't. But so let's say it did. You're in the wilderness. It's much better than being on a city street and having it backfire. So go practice in a field or something. Um, and then learn how to hike. Hike in etiquette. And you'll see how to do this at the go home. So now you have a place that you can go on the weekends. You've got a pretty good life. Uh, it, the more time you have to put into it, the better. So if you, if you then want to start taking her out on the city streets, that's a whole other training session. We're going to then go there, right? Once the city streets are conquered, which is walking by people and dogs, is pretty much all it is, and then like exposing her to the sounds of cars backfiring and trucks and all this stuff, which I would encourage doing young. You should do it young. It's not something you wait until they're older to do. You, this is the time, okay? Uh, and so that'll give you enough to work on. But then uh, after that, the next step would be, I'd say you'd be able to do um, maybe like a, a lunch somewhere where you're sitting down or a coffee, but I wouldn't do it in a, like a fenced in area, real tight corners or anything. I don't like to do that anyway, because people can just pop in with dogs that aren't under control and it can just be a fuss. So usually something on, a, on, on the side of the street where you can sit down and have coffee. It doesn't even have to be at a restaurant, but you're just sitting there for a while, right? Watching the world go around. What do we do in that circumstance? Do we let our dog just roam free? No, no, there's no, it's just down. So again, down and quiet. It's a skill they learn here. Because if they can do that, if you plug that into situations where they're normally being a pain in the ass, it's like, wow, that's pretty nice. Down and quiet's good. So they learn down and quiet, no fussiness. So I even catch her fussing a little bit. I give her a little click here. That's her warning. Stop fussing. Be a big girl. Be patient. You know, it's, it's been, yeah, I understand. It's been like 10 minutes. I get it. So it's that sending a message to her so she doesn't get out of hand. So she never gets past that. She never, if you think of it as energy, she goes from zero to, a, to 10, right? But she does. If I say break, she goes to 10. Um, if I start seeing her climb up to one, she's getting fidgety, she's looking at her paws, she's starting to learn to click. Because they're only going up. They're not, they're not gonna go back down, they're just gonna keep elevating. And then once they reach like four or five, it's gonna be harder to get her to calm down. You're gonna have to give her a correction in public. You know, something that's gonna get her to go, ooh! Right? So you monitor the energy, which is something you're gonna learn here. But when you come and do the go home, but the energy is basically, this is, this is acceptable. This is zero. This is what she's supposed to be at until she's invite, invited, right? So if I say break and have her come out, then of course she's allowed to lift her energy up. But if I don't say break and I say heal, she is allowed to lift her energy up just, just enough to get her into that heel that I like. Not anymore, where she starts getting playful. No, 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 no. Just enough that we're walking in the, right? But I want you to still carry that and if I really want, if I really want, which usually I do, if I'm using heel, I want that mind right there, that calm, that let's call that zero, while you're in heel. The more prancy and the more this, this is like, this is, this is more unreliable. <laughs> it's it's a game. Heel's not a game. Okay. If it, if I wanted you to just come in my direction, I say let's go, let's go, and then she can prance around. Oh yeah prancing around. She can follow me loosely. Let's go. Let's go. You can even tap her on the collar for let's, let's go, which is an informal way to get her in your direction, but you're not using heel. And the reason why those are important is because if I use heel, I need to use heel. Heel means no, not, none of that. You know, it's, it's more just, we're following, we're walking, we're passive. We're, you know, we're just nodding. Yes, sir. You know, yes, ma'am. As the people walk by, we're not, we're not like, Hey, what's up everybody? Hi, how's it going? That's not the right energy for heel. Heel is that zero right here. Unless I get play, when you get more advanced, you got the respect to your dog, heel can, you know, you can have heels where the dog will know the difference where they can kind of enjoy themselves and relax uh, versus like, I need to be tight right now. And the, cause they'll know you and your energy and your body language. But in the beginning, tight. We just want it to mean tight, okay? Um, so using all this, we're gonna take her out, right? And we're gonna use the commands to get her around and we're gonna show you when she's free of the commands and how she can behave differently and go and, and play. Um, and then also just be recalled right back. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna release her for, I'm gonna give you two examples. 
okay? And, and she can edit this however she wants. There's two ways to release her, right? Okay, I, I'm gonna, this time I'm gonna say break, okay? Uh, Scarlet, break. Oh yeah, she even tripped over her water, right? Look, but this is break, yeah, yeah, it's all. This is break, this is the energy of break. Yeah, it's playtime. Break means I'm not at work right now. We're, this is, we're gonna do something. It's break, right? Okay, good girl, nice work. Here's another example. Place. Good girl, thank you for being, thank you for bearing with the example process here, honey. Um, so now let's say I don't want that energy because you're, you're not gonna want that unless you're ready to rock and roll and go play, right? Um, let's say I need to get her from point A to the house to point B, which is where we go outside. Sparkles in it, get the memo. Um, we're gonna use heal. All right, you can use let's go, which is the in-between, right? Which is more loose, but that's more advanced. The reason why that's more advanced is because uh, I want you to look at it that way is, is because I need your relationship to be one of authority first before more Lucy, okay? Because you, once, you, you, once she believes you that way, that you're an authority figure, then you can flex it when you need it, that would, but you don't always have to use it. But you need to use it in the beginning in order for her to view you that way. So we're gonna use heal, okay? And the way we use that is the tone on the collar if we need it, uh, but we can also just say heal and slap our thigh. Scarlet, heal. And so you can see the difference of, of that one, even though she was still a little excited because this is the play yard. Um, and she's expecting the play. So I could, if, if I was at home, we would do what we call burning trails and I would keep doing that. I put her back in place, heal again until I get the energy right. So she learns the, what I like. And, and how she knows what I like is that one, she's not getting corrected. And two, I do this, good girl. But I'm only petting what I like. I'm only petting when she gets it right. If I pet it for mediocre behavior, then I'm telling her that's okay. And that's what everybody does. I just want to pet them, right? Have high expectations and you'll create better behavior, right? It's good to have high expectations because you'll run into, con you'll run into conversations where you're going to have to punish her and then you're going to earn those brownie points and then she's going to just listen to you and then you can ease up. That's the, that's the process, you know? But, of course, dogs always try to re-challenge you in three to six months, you know? <laughs> um, break. So... You can see the difference between using the heel and break. Now let's go would take her in this break energy and move her around with me, but not as tight. So I could get her from this part of the other one to that kind of one. I could be hiking and kind of wave her from the right to the left, that kind of stuff. Turn her around in a 180 by saying let's go, giving her a little tap on the collar if I need to. Uh, that's not a recall. That's so she's able to just, you can direct her in the field or on the, on the trails, which is really cool. I'll try to show you some of that as well. But first, let's say we're going to the outside. This, this is the outside, the outside world. world, because we can lose our dog, right? I mean, we can lose our dogs in many ways. They can run away, which these guys are trained, so it's highly unlikely. Um, you know, they could die, or they could get taken from us because they do something bad. This is stuff we get calls about all the time. So the outside world, we gotta make sure we have some type of relationship. That's why we're doing the inside stuff first and like the walk around our neighborhood. So, to send that message to her, we're gonna start with healing, right? We're gonna heal right out the door, okay? Um, at home, if you have the ability, if you're able to open a door to something that she's excited about, like maybe it's even just to your backyard, or maybe it's out to the real world, and she's really excited about it. Um, like you can't get this date. You see, this date's good, right? She's just waiting. She's calm. If she's with you and she's like, I need to go. I need to go. I need to go out. What I like, what I do, is this. I open the door. There's a rule that they know, but if they're excited, they they forget. You're not supposed to go out a door until you're told. I don't have to say stay. That's just the rule, right? That's why I haven't said stay to her because she understands that the built-in rule is that you don't go through until you're told you can. So knowing that, I would just open the door for an excited dog. They'll run out the door because they're not thinking. I give them a nice hefty correction on the e-collar and then a recall back inside, calm them down, walk up to the door, start to open the door again. You see the dog's much more calm and then you say heal and you go through. 
And then you just do that the next day if she's excited too. But what happens is they adjust, the dog adapts, they stay the calm energy, doesn't get punished, plus they get to sell the door. All right? That's very clear. That's a very clear way to live with them. Um, she understands that her, 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 her energy and plus running out the door is wrong because she got punished and then you showed her the right way, okay? Now, if I want to get her attention, if you can snap, that's great. Snap, correction. If you can't, that's fine. You can just shush, tap, shush, tap. It means I don't like what you're doing. Stop it and relax. And then check in with me. So she didn't, she stopped what she did, she relaxed, and then she looked at me. That's her job. Then I direct, right? I can then say, you know, down, or I can say go, get out of here, or I can say let's go, right? Yeah. And now all the rules apply. How did she get up? Oh, I didn't shut the door behind me. She's my bed. She's all right. She's just an added distraction. So what I'm doing is I'm saying heel. I'm tapping the beep on the collar. It's a little redundant, but I want you to get in the habit of doing that in the beginning. Uh, and you know, I slap my thigh. And now the rules are, she's with me and she's calm or she gets corrected, right? So she goes out in front. I'll, I'll explain it a little bit better when we get up here. So let's say I'm walking her now to where she can then use the bathroom. So we're going to a place that she likes to go to because she, you know, she likes to sniff and all that dog stuff. There's a correction, correct, and then the recall. So when your dog goes out of position, you correct on the collar, and then you hit the tone. So it's stim and then tone. If your dog doesn't listen, your stim was what we call a bitch stim, which means it was too weak. You gotta go, just kidding. I'll cut that. It is though. We don't wanna nag our just dog. Just make sure you correct and then direct. So give her a correction with the stim and then tone. And then she comes right back to her position, okay? Now the point of doing this the first time that you do it, the first couple of times, is to correct her. You want to let her know that you correct, just like I do, for position errors. She needs to learn that. That's the most important thing. It's not important for her to be successful. It's important for her to test the boundaries and you purposely looking for her to, uh, you know, and kind of taunting her in some ways, which we'll teach you, to test the boundaries so that you can correct. It's your opportunity to regain control. There's these little battles you need to have. And then once you have them, and you, you do them the way that we teach you and you succeed, then your dog becomes a follower of yours. And they trust and they respect you and they start to listen. So the first couple of walks, we're looking to see how she does. And I'm looking, I'm, I'm looking for my chances to correct. She'll make me stop correcting. And then I, once she does, I give her good girls. And then we can carry on our life, right? Because now we have a better dynamic. But I'm looking to find work on just the walk and that's easy then you're gonna walk on grass and she's gonna want to stop and sniff but she's not allowed to you do all that and then you walk by a dog but barking behind a fence or barking behind a door then maybe we walk by an actual dog in person on the street we show her okay turn around here because it's just for demonstration purposes it's energy because there's a little sparky there's a little uh, spike in energy. She started to get playful. That's one of the reasons why Sparkles is, is good for these sessions because the, the dogs want to go where she is and they also want to play. She wants to play. So I can, dis I can disagree with that energy, all right? Which is important because I don't want my dog next to me like <laughs> with energy because then their, their decisions are very poor. If you can keep them calm, that's the whole, that's the name of the game. Okay, we've reached our destination. Stay. I'm gonna check it out, make sure it's safe. Break. Good girl. And now she can go play. You know, because this is this is the place we walk to. We walk to uh, a field. So then we can do whatever. Have her run around, sniff, do all that stuff. Break. 
I want to form a new, a different thing that she does with me uh, to show affection, right? Even with play, I'd like something different, unless we were playing tug or something. We're not playing tug. She sees my body as being able to jump, which means if she sees it to me, she's gonna do it to anybody. Can't happen, you know? Can't happen. Break. I like that, good. Break. That's fine, that's fine. That's good. That's good, see she's starting, so she's like, I can't jump, what can I do? She chooses something different. I don't care what she chooses, I just said, you know, as long as it was more appropriate, good, I like it. Okay? Okay, good, good. All right. You gotta be able to move like that, and she doesn't try to jump on you, which is a very important thing. Again, if I open this up and she goes in, she's gonna get corrected and recalled. See, so every time she leaves and does something she's not supposed to, we can correct and recall here. But she knows the rules, so she's not going to. I'll step in. And now I have an option to then just release the sound into my house by saying break, and she runs all over the place, which I absolutely could if I was in the mood oh, to could heal and, and have control and go into the house, okay? Now let me show you an example of both, okay? You looking? Okay. Break. That's what normal people's dogs look like when they come in the house. I wanted to give you a little secret on the, in, in, in industry and our dogs don't look that way when they come in the house. If they do, they're gonna get corrected, you know? Yeah, I mean, a little jump in the frame, that's fine. But then they get in the room and they start to calm down. You know what I mean? But not, <laughs> if I have my dog doing this, it's not gonna be good for old Riggins. And so, um, but also what that tells them is like, go check everything out. Which also tells them it's yours. Which is not the impression for a young dog that they should have because then they're gonna challenge you one day. And yes, she is a dog to challenge and yes, she's a dog to bite you. Okay? She doesn't want to bite you, but she's correcting you because you know she's not you're not gonna die, but she's gonna leave a little a little puncture just to let you know don't fuck with me. Because that's what dogs do. Unless you bred it out of them and you got a soft little lab, but that's not a very natural canine, is it? That's something we've created. You know, you, you breed the friendliness in and the, the bites out, but breeds like this, they still got it lingering in there. She, she's got a threshold that you will find uh, easier than if it was a lab. Okay, let's do the second kind of coming into the house. Because look at this, she, she, this is a room that she's not really that familiar with. She's been up here a few times and most of her training is downstairs and outside and in the community. So she's got some sniffing to do. If this was home, she would just be doing everything that she loves to do. Jump on the couch, come on over here, grab this thing, do this shit over here. Like it's a big playtime. It's the living room, right? How would you feel if we, how would we feel if, uh, if people started doing that in our living room? <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Shit down. All right, let's try it. Come on, Scarlett. That's informal stuff right there, what I'm doing with her. Let's go. Informal. But if I really, now, now I have to back my, come. Now I have to correct if she doesn't come. And she knows it. So that she's like, oh yeah, that one I have to listen to. So that's one good thing to know, okay? If you hit that beat, be ready to correct if she doesn't immediately start coming to you. And I mean immediately. Break. Healing her inside and see if, if that's any better. Skylar. Yep. been on that bed before? Never been on that bed, but she got on that bed. Little sniffing that I'm gonna allow that I wouldn't allow in your bed, unless it's a brand new bed. Um, and now. Because she's not paying attention, she took that stem to mean something that it did not mean. The stem never means get off the bed unless there's a beep behind it. Unless you hear beep stem for not coming, that stem will never mean get off the bed without the beat. And that's the way we, we do it so that the dogs, there's not, never confusion, okay? That stem on the bed, if you don't know what I'm saying because you can't see anything, it means to relax, so. Oh, get a number that you about. That's what it means to do, relax. It doesn't mean to recall, okay? Beep, 
that means recall, and if you don't recall, then stim will mean recall, and that's how they train, okay? So when we come in, pop on the bed. That's more realistic because if she did this in the training room, she would have got right on because she's done that a hundred times right She's never been on that bed, hasn't done this in this room. More realistic as to what's going to happen at home. All of those, she's only sniffing that because that's Riggins' bed. And she's like, this smells like Riggins. Okay? Now she's there. Now I can look at it. I don't hear it. Right? Unless you got carpets. And if you got carpets in a dog, it's like, ugh, get those ripped up. Just kidding. Edit that. But seriously, it's gross. All right. So, now I can do whatever. I can eat. I can do my, my work, which is nothing. Besides the dogs anyway. But let's say I had to do something. Get on my computer. Whatever I need to do. She used to stay there and to be quiet. If she starts making noise, she gets corrected. If she gets up, she gets corrected. If she gets off, she gets corrected. And sent back. Until, let's say maybe an hour went by, a couple hours, who knows, whatever we're doing. It's time to go to the next thing. Now I could say break right here. I could. But these are nice wooden floors. And her nails are rock right the nails. And she's going to go all over them. Right? Plus, you know, it, it's just easier for me to move her quietly without disturbing other people in the room by telling her to heal and bringing her to the next, the next activity, whatever it is. Okay? Break. Okay, so you don't see that. I don't think, and I'm right to sniff in the couch, right to all this stuff. It's not what you do when you first get home. You see? And so this is bad. This is, like, she'd be corrected right now if, if it was a dog in this room that owned this room and she was sniffing around like that, she'd get, she'd get, get bit. And they say, you bit her for no reason. It came out of nowhere. No, she's sniffing all over his stuff. She's being, you know, so um, that's not the message we want to send her when we first go home. Scarlett. Place. See me use that body language? Throw it over my finger. Right? The only way it works is the pressure's on them. So I hold that on until she gets back on the bed. And then it turns off. Very clear. Good. Now, if I want to move her a little bit easier, a little bit less energy, we're going to use heal. And if she does jump off, let me just say, because in this room is really great because it's offering a little bit more behavior that we wouldn't get downstairs. If she does jump off with a, with a, when I say heal, she's getting corrected and putting back on place until she can get off without doing that. And it's worth putting in the time for that little bit of her going, because that's the wrong state of mind, it's a state of mind area immediately. If you say heal, it's not play. So let's see she does. Break. Right. 